All right, all right. Wait for a few people to get on. How is everybody tonight? We got an awesome guest tonight, guys. Hope you guys know who this guy is. A real gangster. Gangster. Where is everybody from tonight? If you guys can hear me, let me know. Hello, 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 hello. It's loading, loading, loading. Good evening, y'all. And I uh, want to welcome Tur. Hey, Tur. What's up, Tur? From P Town. What's P Town? Pennsylvania? We got, uh, hey, Sean. Sean Du, I guess. Just joined. Uh, Blue Biang. What's up, guys? Where are you guys from? P Town. I'm not sure where P Town is. P Town, Pennsylvania? P. Porterville? Can't think of it. Got people messaging me here. What happened to the actor question? Hey, Vipster, message on the, the video if you can. The Victor Vipster is as what he's asking for his question. I guess he, he's got a question for uh for Dua. Sack. All right, we got some sack. You guys here, I'll mess I'll, I'll post it here. P Town from Tur. Sean. Thanks for joining, Sean. I'm Sack. Oh, that's it. I am right. Porterville. <laughs> my um my grandpa is from Porterville. Just passed away like uh like uh, late last year. So I was actually up there. <laughs> Come on, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. So uh yeah, we'll five minutes into here. Um Awesome sh show. Let's clear this out. Okay. Awesome show, guys, tonight. Can't wait. Dude, I'm actually kind of like nervous talking to this guy. So um, so let's welcome uh, show 15 from Mo Hustlers. Uh, we're at show 15 at this point, man. This, we're climbing, guys. We're climbing. But we got an awesome guest today. This guy is... 33, I believe, right? Yeah, 33. You all, you guys all know him as Spider from Gran Torino. So let me just get him on a on the on the feed, man. We got lots to talk about. There's a lot of you guys already joined. So here we go. Let me drop this thing here. What's up, Dua? There we go. Dua. Dua, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. What's up? What's up, man? Thanks for joining the show, bro. Thanks for having me. <laughs> we got a lot of people on here. Fine. What's that's that? My, that's my motivation. <laughs> that? What does it say? Do a you're fat. Mulan premiere two weeks left. Oh. <laughs> it, says, it says, do I you're fat? Yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Uh, not anymore, right? It's because I saw those pictures. Dude, I mean, you I'm slimming down. Huh? You slimming I'm down? Slimming. Yeah. What'd you say it was? How many pounds did you gain for that? I gained, uh, first time around, I gained 40 pounds. And the second time around, I gained roughly almost 50. Oh, okay. It's not that much. I mean, you can you can just poop that out and you'll be done. No, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a belly. I mean, I saw you go through it. Right? Yeah. It was, it was a belly, you know? So, hey, those of you guys who joined, appreciate you guys joining. Um, we got spider on the line today right you guys have any questions make sure you uh you write down on the on the comments um i'm excited i'm nervous dude do you ever get nervous like acting and stuff like that or not so much of acting but like uh pretty much like uh like interviews like on the spot really like, at the oh, premieres okay. and stuff like that like i i will mumble and stumble on my words wow so, like, 
in your mind, you'd be like, let's hope they use the right clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I'm like nervous. I'm like, I don't know why I'm nervous, but yeah, I'm like, you know, my, my voice is a little cracking. I mean, this is because you're the man, you're the man, you're spider, bro. Spiders on the line with us guys. So I got, we got a few people, right. From, uh, Charlie's from Oshkosh. Um, let us know where you guys are from. We'll, we'll, we'll give you guys a shout out on, on the screen here. But, uh, uh Dua is on the line with us today you know he's uh let's just let's just get over your your prom your promo first right because i know people know you got something big coming out yeah right. so so mulan comes out on uh november 27th uh next month so um make sure to bring your whole family to watch it it's it's really a uh uh, a touching father and daughter story. So to all the ladies out there, you know, and, you know, because I, I feel like, I feel like uh, us Hmong guys, like, you know, are, we're being the first generation of Hmong people. Like we, we don't spend a lot of time with our fam, uh, our parents because they're working two or three jobs. Yeah. So this, this, this film does really touch upon, you know, um, like, the mostly the daughter but like you know even this even the son aspect of it you know going to war and fighting for you know uh, a country that they love you know so but besides that uh i'm also a writer um uh and i uh written a screenplay oh, we'll, we'll wait on that we'll wait on that but but so when is that coming out like was it march something march 27th march 27th yeah. um and you're in it right i'm in it <laughs> So hope you guys go out support this guy, right? And uh, dude, I mean, there's there's already been a lot of people waiting to see it. Uh, I can't I can't wait to see it. Like I, I was telling him earlier, I haven't seen Mulan, like just a Disney, you know, cartoonish type. So I mean, I guess this is the this is the <laughs> this is the live view, right? Because my kids are still young, but I wanna I wanna make them watch it. I'm gonna watch it too, and then we'll go watch when it comes out that uh that day so man i'm a little embarrassed i don't know it but i do know the little history behind it so hope you guys go out support them uh tag him say hey you're there you know and you've seen him i mean hopefully is that cool you can tag him yeah, definitely. Tag, you. tag me hashtag my name and hashtag mulan and you know because it, it's important for people to understand that you know our community is pretty big and we're here to support each other. So, I mean, that's, that's the only way of them seeing numbers of, you know, uh, out there that, you know, we have numbers and to help with statistics and stuff like that. So our stories could go be out there and go out there too. So, yeah. So tag your name. What was the hashtag? Just your name, right? D -O -A yeah. M -O -U -A. D -O -A -M -O -U -A. Um, or tag me. So, yeah, you guys go there, take a picture of yourself at the movie theater, tag him, hashtag his name. You know, let's get it out, man. Let's get let's get this guy famous. <laughs> All right, so let let's start, man. Uh, dude, thanks for joining the show. Uh, love love to hear about how you got started, right? How did you get started, man? Um, so I got started uh, in such a I think like in like middle school and uh so basically i started with singing and i used to uh grow up singing and always want to pursue singing and eventually uh i've i've realized that there's no chance for an asian guy or Hmong guy making it big in the singing world um so i kind of detoured into acting so my teacher in middle school kind of uh helped me you know do drama class with her and stuff like that and Eventually, from there, the acting bug just continued to just grow. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it started off with singing and, you know, want, want to perform and yeah. pretty much, yeah, yeah. Singing like, like what? Like rock or was it just like? Um... No, I mean, like for me, it's more, I mean, my, I, mean I, I was trained in like jazz and, um, and like concert. Uh, singing and also like show choir and stuff like that I was trained in that sense and and but but, but the thing is uh it's probably for me it would be just like you know like your 
James Blunt type of singing, not so much a rock. Oh, yeah. you got any of that laying around? Or is it just like, do you have any recording anywhere? Or No. <laughs> no. My, okay. my, my singing days is over. I could carry a tune, but that's about it. Gotcha, gotcha. So, okay, cool. So, so you said high school, right? Or when, when was it? Very off in middle school, and then the I acting know. like from eighth grade on, uh, acting, and uh, and from there, uh, again, like, like, like what was it? Like, what would you say when what made you go, man, I want to act? You know, was it just it wasn't it wasn't just singing, and then you're like, oh, okay, I just want to act. What was it? Was it like somebody that you saw that you looked up to and go, hey, you know, I want to do what he does, or I mean. Not, not so, not, not really. Like it's just you know, again, like being the first generation in uh, America, like you kind of see the struggle, and you, you know, it's something just clicked in my mind. Like, like I know I'm not gonna make money, you know, as a profession in this, and like how serious am I gonna invest in singing, you know? So it's just in that sense, and also like my parents, like always, like you know, put in my head that you know for us being Monga, so like it, it's it's like bit you or you know like so like we don't have really much of a market to make money besides yeah. besides the factor of uh soccer tournament or i mean now Hmong village and Hmong town like even now like a lot of those cds and dvds are uh irrelevant now you know because everything's just now free on youtube you know yeah so, well, I mean, that's that's really the big hardship and especially for the Hmong filmmakers right now, you know, how, how do they, they find a new enlightenment to to sh to feature their film and actually make money back before before they were making 10,000 or more and just selling one one uh, one event, you know, once like a tournament to the uh, July 4th tournament, you know, so it, it's now it's just. You know, so in that sense, I mean, I think the Hmong music industry is making more money now than the film making industry in the Hmong community. So, but the switch, the switch from from that to like acting, like what you just just say, hey, I just want to do it, right? Is that yeah? I mean, that's I mean, pretty much like uh, you know, it's just it's just a sense of being performing and like getting uh. you know performing and basically because when you do singing you're singing in front of like an audience yeah. and getting that like instant gratification of did i suck or did i do well you know or did did the audience like my work and from that you know and realization of i'm not gonna be successful in singing because like like there i have my voice is there but like sometimes my rhythm is off you yeah. know so I'm just like, I'm not gonna try to perfect that rhythm because it's it's just not who I am. So, and then my, again, my acting, uh, my acting teacher kind of plugged in acting and I did a play and from there, I pretty much kind of like, okay, I could say words and act and feel and yeah. that's moved into acting. And, what, and was then, that, what was that play? Uh, Our Town. Our town, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's an old American play. So, so what did you do there? Was it was it just uh, what what was the role? I played a uh, a guy who raised horses. I mean, who raised cows. <laughs> raised cows. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much that was like walking a fake uh, cow everywhere. You're an Asian cowboy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And he became a gangster. <laughs> I mean, um, pretty much. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Also, so guys, uh, there's a lot of you guys join. Uh, call you guys, you guys. Call. Let us know where you guys are from, so I can call you guys out. Um, but um, but if you guys have any questions for uh, Dua, um, Dua, right? Dua. Dua, yeah. Yeah. Uh, comment in the comment section. Uh, we're going through his. Um, Right now, we're just asking to just see how he got started. Uh, we already talked about his uh, his next uh, big event that was coming up. Um, how he's going to be in Mulan, right? What was what was the act? What was the what was the character Poe, right? 
Yeah, Pro. The if, if you watched the animated film, yeah. which you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> If you watch the anime film, it's the big chubby friend, and which I had to gain like forty yeah. pounds from it. So, and uh, dude, wasn't that dude bald? Right? Yeah, I mean, I think he was bald, and but the thing, I think, uh, because again, like their the uh, the direction for the film was kind of trying to bring a hint of fantasy, but pretty much the realistic of you know of the story from because there's a poem about uh, Milan. So it's more about that than anything else. So with elements of the animation, but a lot of it is from the story of Milan. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And it does. And it's, it's interesting because it's like the, the Hmong people have their own Milan story, you know, and, and, and I mean, or meow story. Yeah. Of the story same uh woman girl woman warrior too so it's sometimes you just feel like oh maybe it's a monk story not so much a you know a chinese story but again we came from china so really i didn't know that i didn't know that we had something similar uh, a story similar to that uh yeah was it pretty close to like you know that storyline or sort of i mean sort of i mean it's pretty much uh 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 girl who you know became a man and fought uh fought the war became a sergeant and uh, so forth and came back home and by the time he came back home like her her father passed away so she never got a chance to say goodbye to him oh wow okay cool man I feel more like of a, uh, dramatic than <laughs> this one <laughs> there, there isn't a movie out on that one is there <laughs> that you know no, there, there you go buddy <laughs> there's another opportunity <laughs> <laughs> cool cool man um yeah so i think this one is a little bit is this this is a little bit more serious movie right it's not more like it's not like like there's no comedy or something is i think um, it, i it's pretty much serious but i uh my character does bring the comedy into to this film so it kind of kind of get that heartfelt lightweight gotcha. um part of it so I think the com a lot of there's bits and moments from other people who are having their comedy bits, but I, th I think my character brings more of the comedy chop into this character, so I won't so little kids could you know exactly. continue watching it rather than fall asleep. So yeah, because when because just the trailer itself, it looks like it was really serious, but you know uh, I was kind of like I had to Google like <laughs> and just kind of look at that character to see it, it, there was a lot of comedy in the in the cartoonish part, but yeah. But the trailer itself it looks like it's just pure seriousness. But yeah, but there's, so you're saying there's some comedy in it. Well, yeah, there's some comedy. I mean, it's it's Disney, and it has to be. It's the first film that it's uh, it's rated PG-13 besides Pirates of the Caribbean. So oh. you know, it has it has adult moments in a sense, but also has uh, mm -hmm. you know, heartfelt moments and laughing moments and stuff like that. So um, okay. I have, Seen it yet, but through the great vines uh, yeah. that people have seen, like that's that's where the direction of this uh, this movie went to. So, gotcha. So you so you started acting, <clears throat> and then it just kind of it just started from there. It's just like all right, you know, I want to do it. So, um, I mean, I heard from your other podcast, you, you actually uh, paid extra, right? I think you're saying that your mom was working like two shifts, you know. Too different. Yeah, I just feel like just to pay for that. I mean, how, yeah, much, how much was it? Was it was like a thousand bucks for like ten classes. So this was like a hundred bucks a class in Minnesota. Wow. Um, but this is for like theater, theater acting. So but from there, like it's after I took that class. Like I know my mom was working hard, so uh, you know I, I took the time to like, uh, and that's right when dial-up internet came on. You know. Yeah. What? Uh, it was that long ago? Yeah, dial up internet, you know. Uh AOL. Uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> your free your fee your free uh C D at Kmart that you get. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, in yeah. the mail. <laughs> yeah. you know, so, during, yeah. class, during that time, the time period, you know, dude, that's that's way back then. Yeah. So yeah, so your mom, your mom was hustling just to. I mean, did you did you have to convince her, or she was just like, you know, I want to do this for you, or or you know? 
No, I mean, she, she, you know, like it was more like, you know, they thought of my be just a trend and I'm going to get over it. Yeah. You know, but so it's pretty much they rather like my, my mom, my dad rather have me get it out of my system than like later on, like, you know, decide something different. So, but, but yeah, I mean, hello. That was it. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. I was just playing with the buttons. I got oh. Yeah. So, so she was just like, Hey, I'll, I'll just, I'll work two shifts, you know, and then uh, pay for these classes. And hopefully you just get done and you say, Hey, but, but you, you took it to the next level, right? When, did yeah. You know? It's like, I mean, like my, my, uh, I kind of like realized the struggle that my parents went through. So I, I've, I've, you know, again, using the the dial-up internet you know google and yahoo search uh you know what's available for me in minnesota and yeah. would i mean minnesota had like this actress form and you know so and there were all the people there were like you know in their 30s or in 40s and 50s so i would take the the city bus from st paul all the way to minneapolis to just go to these uh free meetup to to a lot of them are you know they go through sides and screens and the whole nine yards so and then i mean from there is just the acting book continue and i just continue doing acting independent films and you yeah. know i shot shot saw short films with uh kang bang and you yeah. know uh, so i mean that's and then also like um Cackley, now he's out here in um, LA, but it's pretty much, you know, the the passion for it and also chat was coming up and, you know, so basically um, getting that bug, like, you know, art, being in the art industry might, you know, be a good thing, you know, so. Okay, so, yeah, so part of, part of the reason I wanted to, um, to invite you on the show because you know acting is just like yeah you know you get all that awesome yeah he's on there you know he's probably making tons of money but you know i was listening to your um the other you know cast or i guess you know other shows that they they interview on and you mentioned the darker side right like the struggles right and yeah. i was very curious you know like you mentioned that you were sleeping on you, know, you didn't have a place right you yeah. were like you know uh, yeah, can you tell us a little about that? I think you said you went to New, New York, right? Yeah, I went to New York, and then uh, pretty much, pretty much, like I had the money. I had the I have a bank account with money and stuff and such. But it just came down because during that time, like you know, you have bad credit, then you know, um, it, then pretty much you can't rent uh, an apartment and stuff like that. So it took me a year to kind of, uh, you know. Uh, sleeping on friends couches to sleeping on the the six train because it was like the subway six number six yeah. is like longest train out of all the subways yeah so sleeping on that to sleeping on benches or sleeping wow. at yeah, at the theater uh yeah. that format let's, let's do this like why new york first right is there is there business is there, <clears throat> is there jobs over there or yeah there, there were jobs over there i mean there's tons of acting jobs over there um okay and also in, in LA too. It was just the factor of uh, I kind of didn't want to drive. So I kind of like, I got subject to a college in uh, LA and New York. And I just kind of to a point where it's just like, I'd rather go to New York and, and test it out. Because like, you know how like the saying, you make it in New York, you make it anywhere. Wow. Um, yeah. Kind of that. And also like being being in New York because I had two cousins that uh, graduated the same year and were was going to go to um, uh, New York as well. So my parents are, you know, Josh Ajona. So like they basically like, okay, at least you guys have each other, yeah. you know, there. So that's why New York was on the, uh, yeah, the list. <clears throat> but you didn't stay with them though. Cause if you did you would, you guys were all bunk together and stuff like that. Right. No, yeah. because we all went to a different school. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So one of my one of my cousins went to uh, NYU, uh, 
for business and film, and the yeah. other cousin was at LIM for fashion merchandise. And I was uh, I was in the Miramama Han College for psychology and communication. And I mean, I think that was the the thing that my parents kind of like. Okay, he's not doing acting out there, so we had nothing to go. Um, was that the, was that just a, was the college just a front for your parents to say, hey, I'm going to college, but you were actually targeting like acting jobs over there, or? I mean, it was a both because like you know like. By 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 studying acting at a so young such a young age, and also like meeting these older actors at the different forums that I went to in, in Minneapolis, like a lot of acting is all about psychology, right? So or、uh, sociology. So basically, I kind of use that as the filter, you know, to understand the human brain and how people interact through situation. So I kind of put. Use the techniques and method、uh, into studying about human interaction, you know. So that that was kind of like my spin on why I want to learn psychology. Yeah.、Um, but eventually, I realized that you know, like I'm spending so much money on just college. Like it was like forty five grand a year, you know. Right. So, so basically, I was like. Acting class. I mean, acting class and acting studios are so much cheaper. I'm gonna pop out of college and go to acting. <clears throat> so, and then I, then I went to study in New York for acting for at different studios and stuff like that. So, how long did you stay in college? Just like a semester. Dude, that was smart, man. You 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 went there and you're like, this is not gonna do it, you know, and then you switch right to like. <clears throat> What acting school, right? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, semester. Like my cousin, because like I got I got to college and my cousin、uh, transfer schools too. Yeah, one from Minnesota transfer to、uh, my same school because she wanted to like be closer to her boyfriend for some reason. <laughs> like, I got to a point where I just have her do all my homework. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Wait. Anyways. So yeah. So yeah. I mean, some people stay through college like all the way or a couple years before they realize.、Ah, all right. You know. Usually, as an excuse, but you were like, "Hey, man.、Uh, let me just jump into what I want to do." Now,、yeah. was that was that a little bit more expensive, like that that acting school, or is it like? It's cheaper. It was cheaper because, but the thing is, like for me, like I, I mean, I, I am still grateful to this day. Like I have. I have like studios and acting class, acting school that gave me scholarship, and they saw something in me at such a young age. So I was grateful in that sense, you know.、Uh, so it, it was, it was, you know, for me, like, it, for me, it's like it was like small little things that kind of like propelled me to be like, okay, maybe this is where I need to be. You know, this、mm-hmm. is the career I need to go to stay in. Because they, I know I had somewhat of chops, but I'm still learning and growing as an individual and also as a young actor. But、yeah. if, if if these teacher or studio saw something in me, then you know I will continue pursuing it. You know. So tell me about yeah okay so awesome great so you were doing that couldn't find a place to stay so you were like, dude, how long was that? Just that was like a year, a whole year of just、yeah. like like looking for places to sleep. Yeah, holy cow! So yeah, it was it was cold during the、um, the winter time. The trick the trick to survive that is sleep on top of a subway vent. <laughs> oh my gosh! You, you get the heat from、uh, from from the tracks yeah, on yeah. the ground, so you can stay warm. So that was doing okay. The trick for that is. That was for the cold season, right? So, where did you stay for the cold for the cool for the hot season? I mean, the hot season you just gotta deal deal with it. Wow. So,、yeah. all right. So then you're、It's、really really humid in、uh, in New York. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. So you were just probably like going inside stores and stuff. I mean, you did your thing during the daytime, right? And then yeah, at yeah. nighttime. Yeah, was- I mean, I, I, the thing is.、Um, Again, like it literally, it's just people that's just been extremely generous to me during my time in New York, from、yeah. friends to strangers or acquaintance. Like, I would, I would, 
I would get a free membership at Equinox from from the the general manager there. Yeah. You know, because literally I was just honest and just 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 literally told my situation and you know and and basically sometimes you just gotta be honest and share your situation and you know if people said no then you move on but people say yes and don't take advantage of it but more in the sense of like appreciate it you know and be show some gratitude about it so i would you know work out watch tv go audition come back you know what's equinox is that like a like a like a workout gym or something what's equinox is like a it's a really expensive gym so you so you use that that was pretty smart to like yeah. shower and stuff like that right yeah <laughs> Holy so shower, and after that you know like you know like it's i use it for shower workout and also like storage in a sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, yeah so there you guys go there's some tips right there he's offering valuable tips you know i mean don't try to i mean don't try to be homeless, you know, but, but the thing it's like, but the thing is, you know, it, it's, it was an experience and it wasn't by choice, you know, it was by situation, you know, but the thing it's like, it does, it does make you, it helped me realize what my, what my parents went through back in Laos and Thailand for not having a lot yeah, and, you know, try to survive on that. And also just growing up and, you know, like, uh, uh, understanding the concept for the Hmong people, how we, you know, the concept of survival, you know, so it's just kind of like actually utilizing uh, the survival tactics here and there, you know, but again, like still be humble about it, you know. I mean, did, did it at least once occur in your head going, oh man, I, I can't do this anymore? Or was it? Yeah, it's, it's, it was when, um, my dad got sick because like, you know, like a lot of the, like our, our parents' generation, like began to have health issues with like high blood pressure to, uh, uh, down and, you know, so, yeah. so forth. And it, it was literally at that time where, you know, my parents didn't know I was homeless because I, you know, because I was still fighting the factor that this is what I want to be do in my career. And I need to stay in New York for it because, because, when the time comes, I have to be here for that time yeah. uh, to actually get the job or at least audition or try out for the job. So my dad, uh, my dad had to go as, uh, you know, because of uh, he got taken out his gallbladder. And then basically after that, uh, the kidney situation happened. So, I, uh, so basically it's kind of from that me was being stubborn and, and not wanting to go right back at home and also like the obligation of being the the youngest son like you have to take care of your parents like yeah you know if if we were back in Los in thailand and don't don't experience what the american dream is or you know or put that into our head then maybe at such a young age of like 18 19 like i would have been there but i think it was just me seeing what the future might lay uh, so I kind of struggle in that sense, back and forth of going home or, or uh, going back home, or you know, continue pursuing the acting dream. Yes. So that's pretty much the moment for me. How long was that struggle in your head? Did you like? Was that? <clears throat> did you have to go through that like weeks to say, "Hey, man, all right"? Or was it? Was just like, "All right, you know." It, 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 it's, it's it's struggling still now. You know, like my parents are still, my parents are growing older and older. And, you know, eventually my dad finally got a kidney, but, you know, he just recently had a stroke two years ago. You know, so it, it, it's always going through my head, you know, of when is the time do I do go back and, yeah. you know, and present there for them 24 hours, you know? So it's, it's always been a struggle. But the thing it's like, it, it, I worked so hard and I don't know anything else to do besides my career or be part of the entertainment industry, you know? Yeah. And you know, and a lot of times you're, when you go back, you're just kind of like, you're just waiting. Yeah. Like, pretty much. I mean, at the hospital, <clears throat> you know, just waiting 
And I mean, I get that there's a presence that you have to be there too. Yeah. So I see what you're talking about there. So there's a struggle. I see, I see that struggle. I don't know if anybody else sees anybody has that problem. Please comment below. But yeah, my dad has cancer. <clears throat> and you know, when you go there, you're just waiting. There's, there's nothing you do, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, what you're saying. So I get you. So let's go back to like um like the struggle, right? So the struggle of acting like so I mean you had money, it's just that you couldn't just get a place to stay, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I tried to find through Craigslist, I found like a room, but like the yeah. I was like gonna move in there, but the it was a scam. So like like literally my deposit, my first rent in was there. gone. Yeah. And like when I was about to move. So after that, I was like I can't oh, so you actually got scammed. Yeah, because you know, in New York, like you know, you're 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 such yeah. an Asian, you just wanna head yeah. over to the shoulder so you know. So you won't have to think anything where to sleep all the time, you know, or getting yeah. kicked out of the park or the subway to to find some a different spot so the cop won't find you, you know. Jeez. So you're just like, man, I'm gonna stick it up. I'm gonna be a real man, you know, stick it out for a year and just like, you know, on your own. I mean, food was not a problem, right? Because so I'm not sure, like, you know, New York has all kinds of food, and you can just. Yeah. I mean, the best place was Chinatown. Like everything was a dollar. Damn. Um, yeah, you yeah. have like you have like, I mean, when dump when dumpling was not a big trend, like dumpling, like you would have like ten dumplings for like a dollar. Yeah. You know, like those like Chinese pastries, like a dollar would get you like two two pastries. You know, like and fruits and vegetables are so cheap in Chinatown. Like it, it, it was like the place to go and yeah. buying food, you know? So, so you did your school thing, whatever you did during the daytime and then at nighttime, I mean, when did, when is it, when do you buckle down and say, okay, I need to find a place to stay. What time was it that you, you go, okay, I need a place to stay or I need to find a, you know, because New York is like, yeah. I mean, it was pretty much like, you know, like, my friends finally decide to move in together and it was literally under it was pretty much under their names on the the the, the lease was under their name so basically they, they had an extra room and basically I just pay cash or check to them you know when yeah. rent comes so i won't have to deal with like you know have to see if i'm approved but for I know, but that's but during the times where you were like I didn't have a place to stay, you know, like you were going, you probably had to go, okay, it's nine o'clock at night time. You know, what do I, when do you start searching for places to stay at? Or do you just kind of like, all right, I'm tired. I'm just going to bunk here, you know? Because like New York is, it's like almost like a city that doesn't sleep. So, so basically some days I will walk on the piers for a couple of hours and, you know, when I'm tired of sleep, you know, or, 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 but again, like there's also most like half of those time that, that, the, the time in that one year, like I was doing shows and I was traveling, traveling with a theater group, you know, that, that had housing for me, or I was doing a theater show for a month or two months and I would mop the floors and sweep the floor and clean the bathrooms and I would sleep, yeah. sleep in the theater. So, I mean, again like it's, it wasn't like i was out out and sleeping yeah. on you know the subway train every single night like there there was me still trying to pursue my acting career and also you know taking taking uh understanding a situation and against you know being honest about it and people a lot of people do open arms and you know and you know just just treat the situation as humble and honest as possible. And people are there to help and stretch out, you know? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here I always visualizing, man, this guy is just, you know, looking for a place, but you, you kept yourself busy. That's basically what. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the key, you know, like it, it's, that's the key. I mean, there's going to be moments where you just feel like moments of doubt and you just want to be like, okay, I can't do this anymore. And then just the small, simple thing that a gesture from one person or a situation of, you know, a callback or whatever, not, or, you know, 
or yeah. landing, landing a part in a TV show or movie or whatever now kind of like, okay, I, you know, I should still continue, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What was the worst part about New York that, that, you know, you, you went, man, this is, this is low. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing I regret or the, the lowest point in New York. Because again, New York does have pretty much everything that one person could survive. I mean, maybe not now because everything there is super expensive now. But um, during that time, like, you know, like, again, like growing up with my grandma, my great grandma, uh, going picking up like cans and bottles to make money, you know, like it's just like the trick is after the the bars and you know close down they throw everything outside so all you need to do is pick it up and go you know <laughs> make some money that's hustling right there guy there you guys look for tips there there you go man it's literally you know be smart you know in a sense you know like that's pretty much it i mean it's just that's why sometimes like i could that's sometimes like i feel sympathy for some homeless people, but some homeless people, I'm just like, if I survived it yeah. and I, you know, take advantage of, you know, what's actually there and is available, like, you know, you can do too, you know, it's, it's all about motivation and purpose. And, you know, everything I did had a purpose to, you know, push me for, further in my career or just learning to be a man or just being a human being. And, you know, so. Gotcha. Yeah. So, all right. So now you're in what? Now you're in California, right? Yeah, I'm in LA. So, yeah. So, uh, what, what, what happened with that transition? Um, it's just you know after Grand Trino, like you know, I kind of like uh, I need to switch scene. Okay. You know, so, so you were in New York at that time. Did you did you get picked up over there for Grand Trino? Yeah. Yeah, I was the first person they auditioned. So they auditioned me for three roles. They auditioned me for the main guy, for yeah. uh, Tao, and then uh, Spider, and then Smokey. So I auditioned for all three, three, three parts. And I guess they decided that, you know, that no one, if I was to play Tao, I mean, I was to play Tao, like no one's going to have <laughs> like, that presence of overshadowing and overbearing uh, character, you know. Yeah. Just because have, the joke aside, it's just because I have a resting bitch face, so it's just kind of. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if I were to see you, I wouldn't want to mess with you either. Yeah, I mean that. That's also one of the factor that people don't really mess with me when I sleep, like in a bench or whatever or not. Or yeah. Way. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, I mean, I love the word. I mean, I love the name Spider. I mean, did. I know. Did you guys come up with that? Or is this like, how did that come out? It was written in the script. It, just, yep. it was just like, I love it, man. It was like spider, you know, like, yep. did you, um, I will let that one go, but yeah, I like that name on that one. Um, all right. So Gran Torino was done and then you were like, all right, change the scene LA. Right. So is it, so is it, there's, there's only there's certain locations right that you can go that to find jobs right like new york and california yeah, yeah i mean during that time was that you know is new york or california again like i came from a theater background in new york that kind yeah. of transitioned into film and television and eventually i kind of got to a point where i was tired rehearsing every day and running the same show every day so that's that's how i transitioned to acting and uh film and and then basically and, you know, I still lived in New York for probably five more years or six more years. I mean, I forgot, but yeah. And after that, I was like, oh, I'm so young. I should try out LA before, you know, like if I don't, I'm going to regret down the road. So that's when I moved to uh, LA um, and kind of found my spot and my, my, the town that I lived in. So, and even before that, like my, my one of my cousins that moved to New York move out to LA, like, I think two years before I did too. So again, it was like the sense of like, okay, I have a cousin there and I don't know how many Hmong people is there, but at least my cousins and family are in like yeah. four drive in Fresno or Sacramento. Now you guys were mentioning like 
to go audition some spots like what what city do you go is it is it really hollywood or is it, it, i mean i mean the sense of hollywood is there's a city called hollywood there's there's like diff, like you know if you think of like st paul egan maplewood uh you know to to minneapolis like they all have suburbs so uh so it's pretty much pocket of actual city you know like imagine st paul and minneapolis times by probably 20. so there's like sections where it's actually a city but it's all combined together so it's kind of like in Calif in la or hollywood it's kind of scattered um of like these pockets of the city so i mean in the sense of we call it hollywood just because i mean people will know that more so than anything else gotcha. so. so just be around those cities <clears throat> so when there's you know i guess what do you guys call it you guys don't call it positions like you guys call it like auditions right is, is that what it's called like auditions yeah like, it's a it's it's auditions it's, audition is pretty much the definition of an interview but so, you're you're reading a, a, a script or a slide in front of a, a camera. So how, I mean, how do you get those? Do you, do you? I have a, I have a manager that signed me back in uh, New York after Gran Torino. And okay. after he saw uh, one of the plays I did in New York. So he signed me like, I think 11 or 12 years ago. So I'm still with him today. Gotcha. But, um, uh, yeah so it's kind of that and then you know there's there's some websites that you can look up uh for auditions and stuff like that but mostly for more of the legit stuff and bigger stuff like you need an agent or a manager to help you through that process gotcha yeah so all right so you mentioned like because we like i said we focus on the darker side and like you know because that after Gran Torino, I mean, you had funds, right? So you were able to like find a rent. You were able to rent now in, in California now, right? Yeah, I mean, pretty much that. That was my that that was literally the key thing that got me that allowed landlords to rent for me. Okay, and it, it, it's like name dropping. Like, like, hey man, I was in this movie, man. <laughs> really, it, it was that. Like, I, I literally again. It was, you know, it was that. And also like, I was honest with the landlord and basically I was like, here's the situation. I have bad credit because there's no credit to be made. And the only credit that did, that did made was, uh, affected by student loans. Okay. So here's the situation. And you know, here's my bank statement. I have money and I'm, I'm, I'm never late for my rent and the so forth, so forth. And because I just did this movie, like I'm having, you know, it was pretty much name dropping. Gotcha. So, guys, I mean, there's a lot of you guys on the on the on the Facebook feed. Uh, there's a lot of questions. If you guys do have questions, uh, go ahead and comment below. We'll do a fire round maybe at the end. Uh, we're getting pretty getting pretty close to it um, till the end. So, we'll do a fire round and just ask. You know, there's a bunch of people that has questions for you. Uh, so, we'll we'll get you to answer all that kind of stuff. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and post or comment below um so yeah so getting to um one thing i wanted to look at is who do you look who do you who, who do you look up to like as far as an actor um i mean the sad thing is like you look up to all these american actors because that's all you see and you know and they're most of their work like who who is the guy like i want to I mean, like if it was me i'd be like I want to be like Arnold, you know, I want to act like Arnold or something like that. I think I lost your feed, bro. Do you see me? Yeah. Yeah. I think we lost him for a second here. We'll get him to join back. Good. But guys, uh, we'll get him to join the feed again. There you go. Let me go ahead and add him back in. All right, we'll catch you back in. Cool. Cool. So, like, uh, like, like I was saying, like, like, who do you want to like? Do you follow a particular person, as far as like, you know, as far as acting, or like somebody that inspires you? I mean, 
Yes and no. I mean, like, you know, like, again, like you look at these American actors and then, you know, you see their growth as an actor and they're the moment that they become stale. And then, you know, you, you get to a point where you're like, oh, okay. Like there's nothing to be challenged with. So like, you know, so it, it all depends on, for me, it's all depends on the year, whatever or not. Like, you know, like I would get inspiration from this actor from this film, but not so much of his longevity or her longevity as, you know, yeah. as an actor. So it's just a particular project. Gotcha. So you just kind of do your own thing. Cool. Um, let's hit, let's go ahead and do the question, man. There's tons of questions here. Uh, let's see here. Got any, uh, 2020 goal from Peter Lee? It's, um, pretty much finding funding for film project that I'm passionate about pretty much about that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, is there a project on the way? Yeah, I've I've ran a um a script that it's been pre production right now, um so so that's that was like a um a script that made top hundred um, screenplays out of uh seven thousand five hundred scripts. So it's like uh, a uh, actual Academy script program. So Academy is pretty much like the think of the Oscars. So yeah. It's in, in, their program for screenwriters so that script is being um being in pre-production right now and uh eventually come to the midwest to shoot it so okay cool so yeah uh there you go peter i guess you can uh i guess you'll be supplying, supplying more info as as it gets you know further along right maybe yeah. on your feed um this guy's asking me like how you how do you like Jet Li and Donnie? Did you get a chance to meet those guys? Yep, I gotta meet them. Uh Jet Li was awesome, you know, like because again, as as Hmong kids, like we grew up watching uh Wong Fei Hong and you know, grew up watching him, you know, and Jackie Chan. So like it was it was it was pretty amazing to uh to meet him and uh become became friend with his daughter and you know, so he was he was really private, but he was such a kind soul, like and he, and there's nothing bad to say about him. Like he's such a very kind soul and, you know, present and totally like, again, meeting a legend, like all you can do is just stare. And <laughs> But you have, that. there was a bunch of legends there, right? You got Donnie Yang and um, Jason Scott, right? Yeah, yeah. Jason, Scott, Jason Scott is such a dude, like love him to death. Like he's, he's an amazing guy. Um, like I could call him right now and be like, what are you doing? And he will respond back. Um, right. But Donnie, Yen, like, again, like I kind of grew, grew up with Donnie Yen, but like, it wasn't so much of like the presence of Jet Li and Gong Li, you know what I mean? Because again, we, we, we watched those dub bone movies of them, you know? So yeah. 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 So yeah, I know what you mean. Um, what about uh, Clint, right? Uh, yeah. Even Clint, like, you know, again, like, a legend like the first time i saw him he, he was so tall and i felt like i was like looking at almost god like and the sun was like <laughs> the sun was like you know shining down on his head so all you see is like a shit his face in the shadow so yeah. it was you know, i mean with gently he's so short that you know i mean he didn't have that sense of god <laughs> him, but like, it, it was it was just his presence was uh, but was it was like but was clint really like like how he was in the movie like really quiet and kind of like or is it was he like a little more out there you know like like i mean a good balance of both you know what i mean okay good, like you know i mean he's not like obnoxious or anything like that but you know like he's active and talkative and what knows what he wants and how to you know execute it so okay gotcha um this guy's saying as how the actors stuck up or uh, I guess they're I mean I don't think anybody any of them are stuck up right how actors are stuck up I mean it's just the way how they are yeah, honestly too there there are some actors are stuck up and there's actors that just think they're they're too good to be screwed yeah so it's you're gonna have a different a lot of different personality but that's just being a human being you know what I mean like you're gonna you're gonna meet somebody that is stuck up 
as hell and you're going to meet people that are just willing to, you know, be there and be the support group or whatever or not, you know? So, and, and also be, being in this industry, like it's so competitive, you know, even though we have such a small population of Asian, Asian American actors, but when one audition come, like everybody goes for it. So there's a support group with there, but they're also a competitive side. Like sometimes it's good nature. Sometimes it's just like, you wish that person didn't get that role besides yourself, you know? So, it's 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 all in good good faith and good fun. So, but some yeah. people are are you know, it's just a lot of egos, right? There's a lot of people, yeah, a lot of egos, right? a lot so. of personality. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, Miku was saying like um, they want to see you in home movies too. I mean, it depends. It literally depends on the 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 project and also the script. Yeah. And well, I'm 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 in the uh, acting union, so I mean, like you yeah, you have to have a budget to to fit that quota of the um, the union yeah. to become union for union actors to work in. So, oh, okay, so you are union unionized. I guess there's certain requirements. You know, I, I heard like certain things like what they they feed they have to feed you guys or something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, like, we have this certain amount of, like, time. It's like teacher union, like, actor union, pretty much the same thing, but for yeah. actors. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Peter's saying, hey, did you ever did you ever audition for Crazy Rich Asians? No, they wouldn't bring me in because I was Hmong. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, let's see. The same thing for Brenna Song. Like, they didn't they wouldn't bring her in because she was... Mong Thai, I guess. I, I, I guess. Do they? So that's that's the crazy part, you know. Do they ask you, "Hey, are you Mong?" I mean, is that? <clears throat> do you fill out an application and they ask you that kind of stuff, or? You know, they, I mean, you don't fill out an application, like literally, because 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 we are me and Brandon Song are in the limelight, and people do do research, and people do, you know, <laughs> look up where we're originally from, so. I mean, the internet has trolls all over the place. So, you know, they'll put stuff that they hear from this person to that person and put it in line. So any suggestion of that kind of uh, affects uh, your job, you know? So so basically because we had to, we, you have to consider that, uh, that the entertainment industry is a business. So you have to understand that a film needs to make money uh, from different markets, you know, like for the Chinese market, like yeah. Chinese people want to see white people, you know, or or Chinese actors, yeah. and the, so for the Koreans or the Japanese. So like it falls down to again a business, and sometimes you just really have to understand that. But only it, it literally took me this age to understand that maybe like a couple of years yeah. years ago to understand it and not take it personally. But that's how hard this industry is. Like, if you have to understand and face the fact that you are a different ethnicity within uh, the Asian uh, uh, community, like we're minorities within a minority, so we don't have a market unless we make one. You know? Yeah. So, like, uh, so uh, popularity does that does that help? As yes. Well? I mean, it really, it, uh, you know, like yes and no. It it it's, it's re it really depends, you know. Yeah, it really depends. This guy is saying, "Hey, is it true that you wanted to play Han in Fast and Furious?" <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. How do uh, I mean, when I had my long hair and was a little bit skinnier, people do mistake me for him, though. Oh, gotcha. Uh, he's also that was a follow up. Another one that. You get a lot of rejections on the roll. Yeah, you do get a lot of rejection, and you know it just helps you build uh, thicker skin and kind of like showing the the that that staying a little bit uh, quicker than usual. But it comes in time. Gotcha. He also had another one. Yeah. So so now I mean the, the other question is would you make more money being in a movie or a TV series because we are we are kind of seeing all these actors going to like TV series what do you think about that um it's fine I mean like Netflix is really good about you know being diversified of the story they're telling you know but like if you're looking at these other uh big streaming 
platforms like they're still stuck with you know the the white story the black story and a little bit of the like the hispanic story not so much of like you know the asian stories so but again the the, the in this industry it, the asian story you know the asian american story only lies in three cultures japanese korean and chinese so like if you don't fit those stories then you know it you're still oh, yeah right, you know? so yeah gotcha yeah. For me, like, I can't be picky. If there's a film that, you know, want, wants to have me, totally up for it. If you, there's a TV show, it's up to it. And, like, your your salary comes down to the popularity, hence, hence also, you know, your your resume for acting. Like, uh, so it all comes down to a lot of factors and how much can you, how much can your presence draw an audience, you know, so it all depends. Gotcha. Uh, Vaughn, Vaughn says, uh, do, you need, do you do any preparations for like auditions and stuff or you just show up and just read the script? It depends. It really depends on the project. If, if it's like a project that I really want, I over prepare myself so I could be familiar with uh, the character. And like if I need to improvise, add a word here and there that, you know, feels more natural and real to me, like I will have the more of the leisure to do that. So my mind won't be thinking like oh shit i i screwed up the the sides you know yeah yeah. but like there's some there's literally some auditions that i go to and i know i'm not gonna get cast but they just want to see me you yeah. know like so it depends on depends on the project and the character uh is there going to be another gvp movie or is there is there a gvp movie general vane pound movie there, there's a general Vang Pao movie that's in the works. There's actually, I think, two possibly. Yeah. So that's in the works of, um, but I mean, I don't know, I don't know the uh, update on that. I was supposed to sign on to one of them, but I mean, again, again, like it, it all depends on union, the script, and everything like that. So. Wow, is it? Who's directing? Is it? Like in America? I mean, they're still working on the script and development, so I have no clue. I mean. Wow, that's, yeah. that's that's me. I, I I thought somebody was joking about that, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I just throw it up there and see if uh, you know, if it's um, if it's for real. But uh, I guess you're saying so. Um, yeah, but the thing, the thing is also like just I mean I would love to play him, but again, like if there's a young actor out there that fit the role better, like all for it, go for it. You know what I mean? So. Not me. I again, like, I want to give the opportunity to the younger generation to, you know, proceed and, you know, continue this dream of what I've, what I've, what I've achieved so far. You know, it literally comes down to timing. If you know, I, I, I'm, I look too old to play young Jeremy Powell, then I'm not going to do it. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I'm not, unless I'm old, like an Irishman and change my face. You know. <laughs> Guys. Gotcha. All right, man. That kind of concludes it. We kind of one one thing here, right? So, I mean, we have a new segment here. Um, thanks to you guys for all the questions. Uh, I know I skipped a few of you guys because kind of uh, cramped for time. But um, oh, let me let me add this. If if you're somebody who wants to start acting, right? Because I know you got the experience. Can you can you give these newbie guys like some tips before you know? Save money. About- there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Save money. And they, that's pretty much it. it. It It's again, you have to consider that act the uh, entertainment world and acting is an investment. So you have to save money to invest in your career. I mean, like literally, yeah, I, I've done, you know, a lot of independent films and TV here and there and small roles here and there to kind of, you know, pre- prepare me for, you know, for Milan or for other projects in the works or, you know, but again, you have to be patient. And because if you just look at the timeline, like, you know, it, it, it took me probably like since middle school to, to, you know, be, being at age 20 and 21 shooting, shooting uh, Grand Trino. And it took me another 10 years to, to, you know, to be confident enough to hold myself up and go audition without being ner- nervous and landing Milan. So a lot of it is, you know, is time. And with in between, like, don't be ashamed to 
scrub the toilet to make money. Like I, I, I did it. I did it right after I came back from shooting Milan. I was working at a restaurant, you know, like literally like just be smart about, you know, the possibility of not getting the next role, you know? Yeah. What's like, when we say save, like you're talking about like how much should we save, right? Like 50K? I, say, I, say, I say at least enough for two years. Two years. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. To land like yeah. maybe something like a decent role, right? Yeah. Like wow. I mean, if yeah. safe, but the thing is if you have a job, then totally fine. But like if you're expecting to just go out to New York or come to LA and be a superstar or start acting, then you gotta save at least money for at least two years that covers your your uh your car insurance, your gas. The place to sleep, um, food, um, maybe acting classes and so forth, and learning from my mistake. Also, health insurance. So, I mean, a lot of these factors come 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 to play. So, you have to budget it out and start saving. You know, save when you're young. You know, or I mean, if you come here, with, you know, and you got a job right away, awesome. You know, but still save because you never know when when things gonna happen that you need that savings to keep you you know going and pursuing your career you know or your dream all right cool cool so with that in mind dude if i was to give you a billion dollar what would you do with it like right now <laughs> uh to be honest with you with a billion dollars i would actually build a small village for my my mom and dad and aunts and uncle that's one yeah. thing and the rest is pretty much uh invest into film projects that i believe in wow this yeah. that's it man awesome yeah. i mean i think the dream of having Hmong land if you could create that on your own terms and then why not <laughs> buy some land and build some houses around and say Hmong land us or like laos no here I mean, <laughs> unless they deport me to the uh, back to Laos, you, know, Laos man, you can build bigger, more land. But I'm just saying, yeah. So yeah, the thing is, uh, it's 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 slightly dangerous in Laos. I've been there. <laughs> gotcha. So it's kind of like, hey, family first, and then invest to to make more money. That's kind of how yeah. you do it up. Yeah. And yeah, right. also, I would love to like eventually have the funds to to build a uh, a performing theater in minnesota so so uh hey man i want to appreciate you for coming on the show uh where can people get a hold of you um follow me on social media uh facebook or instagram i'm more active in that uh, I've, I've like tweeted like one or two times in my lifetime but um yeah, yeah pretty much uh search on um, facebook is dewey but my name is dua so yeah. Instagram, you spell my full name, you'll find me. Uh, it's it's D O U A more, right? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, once again, so, uh, those of you guys are going to watch the movie, uh, hey, take a snapshot, tag this guy. You know, let's make this guy famous. Let's uh, hashtag uh, draw more uh, when you do as well. And let's make this guy famous. And uh, that's it, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on the show. Those of you guys, uh, those of you guys are watching the replay, you know, if you got any questions, go ahead and comment down. Um, let's hope maybe he'll come back and answer some of these questions. There's tons yeah, of questions. Or feel free to message me uh, yeah. on okay. the social media. We usually yeah. responsible. I mean, responsive. He is. He is. I, 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 that's how I got a hold of him. I just messaged him. So thanks for coming on the show, bro. Keep hustling. Thank you. Man. you too. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a good night. And I can't find my mouse. Okay. It's under your table. <laughs> or, wait, is that a rat? There we go. All right, good night, guys.